Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. This evening, we're going to do a review of the new Roden 130 second scale Stearman biplane. I remember back in the early 1980s when I worked at the Navy lab in Panama City, Florida, there was a real Stearman biplane sitting in the hangar there where I learned how to fly. And in honor of this, I wore my old flight jacket. And you know how you can tell an old flight jacket and a real flight jacket? Expanders in the back. And what are the expanders for? So that when you reach for the instrument console and change the dials, you don't go like this with the jacket. It actually expands. So with that, I ordered this off of eBay from a company in Ukraine called Model underscore UA. And they took the opportunity to open the box and they put lots of bubble wrap on the inside, and then they re-shrink re re wrapped it for me, and it was $48, and it had free shipping from halfway around the world. So what we're gonna do is we'll open up the box, take a look at the parts here, we'll do some close-up photography, and then we're gonna do a tape up. I'm gonna show you how this beast goes together. So, stay tuned. Sprue A is the upper wings. The plastic is very thick, and consequently the assembled wing is going to be pretty heavy. There are no alignment pins, and there are also several tree injection stubs on the inside areas of the part halves that will need to be removed. Sprue B are the lower wing halves, and the airlock control surfaces are separate. The plastic is not as thick as the upper wings, so they won't be as heavy, and again there are no alignment pins. Sprue C are the aileron halves, the elevators, and the rudder, which are one-piece parts, and the elevator wings, which are also one-piece parts. Sprue D are the fuselage halves and the three-piece forward fuselage section. The inside area of the fuselage halves has some really nice framing and stringer structural detail. This sprue has no letter associated with it, and it has most of the internal framing parts. There's also a lot of flash on these parts that you're going to have to carefully remove. Sprue H is the Continental engine parts and the propeller. Continental radial engines have the push rods facing towards the fuselage, not forward like Wright and Pratt and & Whitney radial engines. Here's the backside of Sprue H. This sprue has no letter associated with it, and it has most of the cockpit parts, the firewall, the lower forward fuselage part, and the outer wing struts. Sprue K, of which there are two, has more cockpit parts and the wheels. The clear part has the two windscreens and the navigational lights. The clear parts were just placed inside the bag that contained the rest of the sprues. The radial engine cylinders have almost no cooling vane detail on their surfaces. And the radial engine halves have no alignment pins, and there are several tree injection stubs that you're going to have to remove. The top of the upper wing has a gouge on its surface at this location, and there is also another gouge at the left wing tip. These gouges can be carefully filled with tiny amounts of superglue and then carefully sanded smooth. And then use some steel wool pads to smooth out the surface. The left lower upper wing half has two round injection marks. Use 0000 steel wool pads to carefully and lightly smooth them out. The aileron hinge slots will need to be carefully cleaned up. These tree injection stubs will need to be removed for these parts to fit them. Also, the blue arrow points out an area where the plastic did not completely fill the mold. The instructions appear to have all the parts correctly labeled, however the drawings aren't clear, especially for the engine assembly. On this kit, it's very important to test fit all the part halves and the sub-assemblies. You will also need to devise your own assembly sequence depending on how you want to paint all the interior parts. And the flying wire locations that are on the instruction sheet are somewhat vague. 
The instructions also have two paint versions, the classic blue and yellow version, and of course the classic silver version. The decal sheet is fair, but I recommend you get an aftermarket one. This lower alignment pin needs to be removed so that the lower fuselage area will have a better fit. The cockpit framing will need a lot of careful cleanup using a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade. And also be aware that the plastic is very flexible. The diameter of the forward axles are too small for the wheel openings. You will either have to add wedges to them for a tighter fit or glue a rod section into the axle opening and redrill the holes to the correct diameter. The cockpit framing only has alignment pins for its fit to the firewall. You will need to carefully tape the frame together, make adjustments, and place drops of superglue at the connection points. The fit of the assembled framing inside the fuselage is pretty good. However, be sure that the framing end sits snugly into these positioning tabs. The rudder fit is good and the elevator wing to fuselage fit is pretty good. I recommend using white glue to fill the voids at the fuselage attachment locations. Also, there's no guide wire support points for the elevators. And the elevator hinge openings will need to be made smaller using tiny strips of plastic for a tighter fit. The upper fuselage part halves fit together pretty good. The lower area can be adjusted to get the two sections level with the alignment pin removed. The forward lower fuselage part seams and the void will need some work. The fit of the lower wings is very loose. I recommend that you glue the lower wings in place first. Then reinforce the interior attachment points with plastic wedges and more super glue to make the assembly strong. Then proceed to add the cockpit subassemblies. These two alignment pinholes will need to be made bigger for the three piece forward fuselage parts to fit together. The engine, the cockpit, the fuselage, the lower wings, and the aft control surface subassemblies for this kit are buildable using the assembly techniques presented in my aircraft tutorials. The three piece forward fuselage sections have some voids that will need to be filled with strips of plastic and then sanded smooth. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to report to you that the upper wing attachment is not buildable. The outer wing struts are very thin and flexible, and they cannot support the weight of the upper wing. The positioning holes in the wings for the outer struts also need a lot of work. A close-up of the inner wing struts shows just how bad the fit is. They're just not long enough to attach to the fuselage. The upper wing was skewed slightly to the left, so I corrected that and it only made the fit of the inner struts to the fuselage worse. The assembly has the lower wings with a really, really slight upward angle. However, on the real aircraft, the lower wing should be almost parallel to the ground. Reducing the slight lower wing upward angle creates voids between the wing and the fuselage attachment points and it really doesn't fix the length issue for the inner struts. The connections for the lower outer struts are only a horizontal pin, and when you try to position it correctly, it bends the strut. The inner wing areas and the fuselage have no indentations for where the flying wires go. However, the upper wing attachment to the model is so fragile, adding flying wires will almost likely bend or snap the outer wing struts. This brand new kit is a good example of why test fitting and doing a tape up of your model is so important. It's better to identify issues, challenges, and problems, and yes, the model's buildability before you start. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tape up review of the Roden 132nd scale Boeing Stearman. I had to take the upper wing off because it was putting so much pressure on the tape on the lower wing, it was tearing it. And as I said in the review, this is going to be a real challenge to fix. So with that, have a great evening. Happy scale modeling. 
And please be safe and don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com.